Hello everyone, that's here. Very happy to see all of you on other side of the screen. Today I would like to kick off a new series of videos and this will be a roundup and comparison of current crop of CPU blocks. Last time I personally touched the subject was probably seven or eight years ago. Since then most of those blocks was discontinued and um, I always wanted to check out what's going on with the current crop of CPU blocks. Also, to be honest, why I was reluctant to do so before was the fact that design-wise didn't really many advances happen. It was mostly about adding stupid LED lights and stuff like this. But design-wise, the impingement plates, fins and everything would basically stay very similar. So I rightfully assumed that this will be very similar to what we had before. But I think that now it's time to check out what's happening and do a little bit of experimentation. Another reason why I have moved forward with this particular project was the fact that Intel released the newest version of their motherboard and CPU, which is not new, but what is new is that they finally, in gazillion years, they changed the socket. So before we were forced to buy new motherboards, we were forced to buy new CPUs, but the distance between screws, the socket design itself was pretty much the same. So all you need to do in terms of water cooling itself, you just take old block, move to new motherboard and call it a day. And it's basically was perfectly fine. Now they did a little change that actually a lot of people start questioning what this means. And specifically they reduced the height of the socket by like couple millimeters. And um, the screws itself also changed, so it became a little bigger, but that's not a big deal. But the fact that the socket is smaller, it means that old mounting mechanism may or may not work as efficient as it was before, because there is a certain recommended pressure to which heatsink need to get attached to the CPU, or CPU itself. So if we have CPU sitting lower, essentially the springs or whatever mounting mechanism we have pressing on the CPU with a lesser pressure and this means that heat transfer will be not as efficient as it recommended by manufacturer standards. Now the question is, is this change actually spells in any specific degrees? Does it, does it, do we need to bother about it? It's a lot of videos, a lot of discussions right now going on on the internet, but um, I watch them, I discuss them with my buddies, but at the end of the day, I think that I decided that maybe I want to do a little bit of experimentation myself and also on the way, I will be also testing variety of CPU blocks. They have a, like a little bit of models that I line up for that purpose and we'll see how they stack up to each other. Maybe it will be the same old result as we had before, but maybe not, who knows? So we'll see. So I would like to move uh, and talk a little bit about my workstation that I built for this particular purpose. Uh, for those who follow my channel, remember that I did, um, well actually I didn't do any videos I think about it, but anyways, so I built my own computer which was um, themed for the new Matrix movie. And um, I was pretty much ready to, you know, use it as my main rig, but it didn't live long. So I basically I broke and reused a bunch of parts. Matrix build doesn't exist anymore. And number of parts here that you see, they temporarily reused for this specific test bench that I'm using. So I would like to use the same type of configuration for all CPU blocks I have in place. So we have a kind of similar point of reference. So. In terms of hardware, I have Intel i9-12900K, I have a Maximus Hero, it was another drama related to this one, my version is fine, if anybody wondering. I got a Seasonic power supply and I have XC3 GPU itself, so this is in terms of hardware. The main problem was, as many of you might know, was DDR5 memory. I, for love of God, no of my contact can help me. I basically have to buy the bullet and uh, get it from retail at scalper prices and New York, Canada. And it's cost me more than motherboard itself, which is totally ridiculous, but 
I was really curious, so I bite the bullet. And um, a lot of you guys actually are helping the channel. So we have a certain budget working with, so I said, well, it doesn't matter. I can wait a few months or I can use my budget and just buy overly expensive DDR5 memory, which I did. So we have 32 um, gigabyte of RAM from G-Skill. Simple one, no RGB, no crap like this, which I totally don't like myself. I don't need it, so a little save a few, few bucks for that one. So in terms of water cooling, what we have here? So I took a reuse my heat killer reservoir for, with D5 pump variable, which set on, on speed 5, not changing that. So that was taken from the Matrix build. I using Crossflow triple dark side slim radiator with a gentle typhoon fans attached to it, 1850 RPM. They will set on maximum speed. I having my CPU blocks, which will be changing in the process. I have a heat killer GPU block here and backplate, which GPU will not be actively participating in the testing, but nevertheless, I just included it in configuration. I also tried to use Barrow integrated flow meter and temperature sensor, which I was a little bit curious how this works. So that will be my point of reference to measure my flow rate and my temperature. I also have a backup temperature sensor attached to GPU block, but it's basically reporting the same number, so it's everything fine. Flow meter, I think maybe it's a little bit more optimistic than it's in reality. It's showing me like seven liters per minute, which is kind of high. I would expect from my personal experience, usually for this kind of configuration, you maybe get like five liters, a little bit more than a gallon per minute, but with it doesn't matter. So we will use the same type of hardware for all CPU block testing. So relatively speaking, the numbers will change, but all we need to know, less restriction, more restriction and things like this. So that's what's regarding to hardware setup, water cooling and electronics itself. So the first block that I decided to test and also it will be subject of today video is uh, this one. It's original velocity from EK water blocks. Why I started with this one? First of all, it's one of the um, old type of the blocks. It's on the market for quite a while, maybe three or four years. It potentially may be phasing out, but I would like to say that in my personal estimation, this is probably number one selling block on the market and uh, a lot of people having this block, so it's relevant to many viewers. That's why I started with this as a base point and we'll start comparing to this Velocity block. In order to use existing Intel version of Velocity blocks, basically you have to buy little additional piece of hardware, which is a uh, backplate that fit properly back of the motherboard. So that's um, something you need to get extra. In terms of mounting, it also depends on the motherboard. I, I'm not so involved in the hardware to tell you for sure, but for example, for this particular motherboard that I have here, um, Maximus Hero, you actually can uh, they have a two sets of holes, so theoretically you might will be able to mount CPU block with the old type of backplate, although it may not fit nicely, but uh, there's a possibility that you can reuse any kind of old model of the Intel block. But in order to have a proper mounting, so everything goes snug and perfectly fine, that you need a, a little bit different version of the of the backplate, and I, I would like to show you what the problem is here. So this is our original LJ1200 or whatever, 1150-51. So it, it has a, those holes for screws, there's a two of those, and but because of the socket change, now you have a, like a four, four screws that are um, interfering with the backplate. So if I try to use this backplate, it will be hitting bolts, those two upper bolts or bottom bolts, whatever, um, and will not fit properly. For that reason, you kind of need a different model. I'm not sure how it will work with other models of the block. We'll see in the later videos, but 
that's basically only additional piece of hardware which I purchased to make sure that this particular block will fit nicely. I didn't change any springs, nothing, so the mounting mechanism was absolutely original and uh, that's how I use it. So in terms of testing procedure that I probably supposed to tell you as well, I'm personally not big on work locking, it's not my hobby. Why I'm water cooling, I'm trying to make absolutely quiet computers, at the same time like powerful enough, but quite often I either have a very mild or even run stock. Oh, oh my god, how it's possible. But yes, that's our clocking is not my thing. I don't give a sh rat ass about it. So in order to, in order to catch up a little bit, I watched a couple of videos. Basically, uh, my main videos that I use and decide to copy was a J to Sense video about um, I will put link into the description, uh, which uh, was basically using Cinebench for creating workloads for CPU. It has a Intel management software that actually you can change quickly without rebooting your multipliers, your voltages. So if something crash, you just, you know, saves you time. And um, I use a hardware monitor to see what the temperatures I'm getting. So that's my setup. Um, possibly it can be done better way, but I think in terms of point of reference, we just do the same thing and see which beha behave better. So I think that will achieve the target. If somebody disagree, Feel free to do the testing on your own and share it with community. So anyways, the best overclock I was able to achieve with this particular block was times 52. That's for the P cores, performance cores. For the efficient cores, I just set everything on the 40 and that was uh, my setup. So 52 for all P, 40 for all E. That's, that's the set. I couldn't go beyond that. 53 crash and any voltages and I start hitting thermal throttling. So the basically the highest voltage that I was able to achieve before I start getting thermal throttling was 1.27 volts. But when you try to lower the temperature and see if the system is stable, I went down as low as 1.255. So that's the best result I was able to achieve with this block. I think that 5.2 is relatively a reasonable number. I think a lot of people will be happy with this result and I see that a lot of reviewers who reviewed 12900K CPU, they was basically getting similar result. Some people pushing as far as 5.5 but um, you know maybe my silicon lottery not that great so there's a couple things that i would like to make a reference just for the fact that we will be going to compare with other cpu blocks that we will continue to work with is uh, what kind of flow rate i achieve with this particular result so flow rate for this uh, original velocity was a seven liters per minute so it was 702 that's, that's the maximum number i ever was recorded on on this particular flow meter so that's uh, the result i'm getting i will see what kind of flow rate because uh, again the faster liquid moving the faster heat get re removed from a cpu block so theoretically lower restriction block might have a advantage here so we need to record that um, Everything will be equalized to the same room temperature. It's more or less stable in the office, which is nice, but it can be variation a little bit more, half degree plus, half degree minus. So this will be, again, I will take in consideration later. But for now, what is my take on reusing of the original velocity, if you have it? So uh, you, probably you still have to purchase backplate. I, I don't see how you properly can mount everything on an old type of backplate, so it's a little bit of expense for you, whatever it costs you. But after that, maybe it's not optimal, we'll see in a future videos when I start using dedicated um, LJ1700 type of the blocks. But I achieved a reasonable type of um, overclock, I was also achieving a reasonable numbers for the temperatures maybe not absolutely perfect but nothing crazy either so if you have anxiety or you have a low budget or whatever bothering you you kind of okay in my personal opinion so it will be not perfect 
not maybe up to the recommended whatever but it will work fine and maybe your system will be around certain degrees hot i will find out later i sorry i cannot tell you right now but basically the bottom line is that block is still fine so if you if you want to reuse it for whatever reason i think you can so i don't see absolutely zero problem you don't need to trash it and don't need to run and quickly buy the newest version that's my takes on it i hope the stuff is helpful feel free to share whatever comments you uh, would like to add it's unlikely I will change methodology because I would like to do the same, the same. But nevertheless, if you disagree with something, feel free to tell me. Maybe I will use it sometimes in the future. Anyways, guys, thank you. Happy to see all of you there. I, as I see, I'm in the process of going with Velocity 2, which is an EK dedicated type of the blog. So that will be a separate video and when I finish we will talk about how it compares with original velocity and uh, is there any benefit um, and so on, things like that. Alright guys, thank you again, see you soon and uh, thank you for watching, bye bye.